Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Adobe Live. It's 9.30 Pacific time. I'm sure it's another time all over the world, wherever you guys are tuning in. And we're doing day two with Grace Jew. We're going to be doing some more fantasy character painting illustration. So very excited to have you back again, Grace. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, I'm very much. excited a, to be here again. Yeah, we had a great day yesterday. And sorry for starting a little bit late, guys. Had a little bit of technical difficulties this morning. Um, but... So excited for today. Um, if you guys didn't catch uh, the Photoshop Daily Shop, the Daily Photoshop Creative Challenges last week, you can check out the replay this week at nine o'clock right before this stream with Sam Peterson. It's a lot of fun. Um, he's got a lot of great tips with Photoshop and uh, great artist. And uh, yeah, if you guys are on YouTube, come on over to Behance at b.net slash Adobe Live. Come check it out over here. You guys can communicate with us in the chat. And seems like Wade is uh, moderating again today. Hi, Wade. How's it going? We got uh, Annika, uh, Robert Wennerberg. Let's see. Probably see some more familiar faces as we go on. Laura Staneva. How's it going, everybody? Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. And um, yeah, Grace, if you just want to take us through kind of what we did yesterday and then what our plan is uh, for today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you, if you didn't tune in yesterday, I talked a lot about how much I don't like the drawing part and how much more I'm going to enjoy today. Um, but we were able to do some pretty cool designs, so I'm going to show you them now. Um, I did three different rough designs, and then I, we had the chat vote on their favorite one. So this was the first one. Um, it's a little more spooky. The second one. Oh, and by the way, these were all uh, I talked about my inspiration for these as well, where they were based on ornamental objects from the past and how much I'm personally inspired by history and all the art that came before. Um, so this was the second design and this was, and then this was the third one, which the chat liked the most. And from this, we made a more uh, detailed iteration and this is pretty much where we are now and where we're going to start today. So awesome. starting from here today, we're, um, we're going to come up with a couple of different color variations, and then we're going to just spend the rest of the time rendering it up, making it a little more pretty, making, it look, making the metal look more metal, all that good stuff. And this is your favorite part, right? Yes, we're, exactly. We're now yes. entering. Okay, that's yeah. good. It's always well, and, and when you enjoy what you're doing, it's a lot more fun to watch too. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited for today. Um, well, cool. Yeah, let's, let's uh, get into those variations. Yeah. Um, so bef between let's colorize the lines a little bit. So you see mm -hmm. a little bit more of the color um, yeah. and I made it into a new file. So I'm going to go ahead and close the previous file um, and also enlarge. Actually, I'll, I'll keep it this size for now, but I am going to enlarge it for the rendering process. Okay. Um, and right now I'm just going to uh, play around with the color scheme. On the awesome. left, I have a couple of different references that I showed yesterday. These are just uh, a bunch of character designs uh, that I found, you know, on Pinterest, on ArtStation, uh, various places on the internet that um, mm -hmm. I thought like maybe kind of fit the fantasy mood and then we're just gonna maybe take some inspiration from them. Yeah, um, awesome. Yeah, but I think for the first one, I actually kind of like the black and gold. So maybe that can be kind of our first color variation. Uh, yeah, it kind of fits the there. vibe a little bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, um, I think quickly, too, I, I forgot to mention, um, we're going to be doing an artist spotlight today as well. So stick around for that. I think we're going to be doing it. Um, let's see. I think around 11 o'clock, I think, or 11, 20, I can't remember. Um, but it'll be later on in the stream. I'll remind you guys. Um, and remember, you can always nominate somebody else or yourself uh, to be featured in the uh, artist spotlight. So let's see if got and hi again to everybody in the chat. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, 
uh Biola says the rabbit ears uh on the headphones are awesome are they rabbit ears or are oh, they thanks. cat ears I, yeah they're cat ears uh, but <laughs> rabbit ears would have been cool too yeah that could work i think i mean they're like detachable right so i just have to find like detachable rabbit ears and replace them like i could oh is it customizable Can you uh, customize i don't think it's customizable of... but it is just like they just clip on to the headset so gotcha. i mean i could plausibly switch them out for whatever animal i feel like okay <laughs> Whatever, whatever you're feeling that day, whoever yeah, your spirit exactly. animal is. Just a different one every day. Why not? And so when you colorize the lines, um, is it just to kind of get rid of that black line? Um, do you do you put it as like a base color of kind of the colors you're going to be using? Or what, what kind of dictates what color you turn that line into? Um, for now, it's... Uh, I will... So for generally metal, it's going to be like warmer, cooler, right? Um, mm -hmm. So there's really just like, if I put like a reddish brown or like a bluish gray, um, basically that that's how, how I think of that. Um, right. For the cloth, since I'm not, I'm not sure about the color. So right now it's still kind of uh, almost black, but once I do a base color, I'll probably color it differently. For the mm -hmm. skin, um, for me, visually, it's really important to have that red outline to kind of give it a feeling of the, you know, the really nice subsurface scattering of the skin. I find that the red outline really helps right. with that. It just helps bring a little bit of life uh, to the skin where currently it's just a single color, not very lively. Um, right, right. Yeah, that's how I kind of like that there. blood, that warmth. That, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and right now I'm working on maybe like a more autumn looking palette for this for this character. Mm -hmm. um, so the black cool. is kind of like, you know, spooky, dark. But now I'm thinking like, uh, you know, kind of like a goddess of the fall, if you will. Um, and then maybe some leaves in the background. I like that good yeah so i'm just thinking through that uh definitely like a brownish orangish palette but mm -hmm. still thinking about like where to put that right because right there's still a lot of possibilities uh i think i'm gonna color part of the metal as well so like part of the um the i i i forget what we called this piece yesterday the <laughs> the leg uh, the uh leg bracers uh, leg braces yeah yes leg um, bracers yeah. yeah leg bracers um i'm i want to maybe colorize part of the metal so it's not just like a solid block of metal so i'm gonna play with that as well um see if there's any nice colors i can add there to break up the uh the monotony of just having two colors basically mm -hmm. i'm gonna try that out as well That's cool. And though it's kind of be like almost like a painted metal. Like Yeah, yeah, that... exactly. Yeah, I'm imagining like an opaque coat of paint over part of the metal. Mm -hmm. Uh so we'll see how that looks. And so you you said that you were you'd kind of started drawing and painting about fifteen years ago, was it? Yeah, so, something like uh, that. Um, I was just a kid, of, and yeah, mm -hmm. was that yeah? What inspired that? And then, what was the choice to kind of move into programming, but still feel inspired to keep creating as well? Like, was there a point where you're like, I could never do this professionally? Or was it always something that you just did for fun and then it moved into kind of a professional space or what was your kind of, what was your journey uh, with that? Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I've ever thought about it in those terms. I think I just mm -hmm. did whatever felt right as a next step. And that's just kind of what led me here. It wasn't ever like, okay, I have this 10 year plan and this is where I'm going to be. It's really right. like, this is what I want this year. This is where I want to go next year. And then that's mm -hmm. been my entire journey up until yeah. now, I think. Yeah. Which I, th I think it's a good way to look at it is kind of setting these goal posts being like, yeah. okay, this is what I'm going to worry about for now. And I'm, when I get there, I can worry about the next, the next space. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's worked really well for me. And um, mm -hmm. because I, I can't 
I find it really difficult to imagine, you know, just how much everything else around me will have changed in five years. So like, how can I make that yeah. kind of plan for myself? Right. It's, Completely. I think it's actually quite impossible and it's a trap that I think is pretty easy to fall into where you just don't, um, you don't get moving because you like, you can't even imagine where to go in five years. But if you just focus on like the short term and medium term for me, at least that's worked out pretty well. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think there's something to be said about setting goals that are achievable. Right. Um, yeah. It can be really uh, disheartening or demotivational to, mm -hmm. it's like, you're like, I want to get here in 10 years. Well, it's like, well, what are you going to do in between then? How exactly, are you going to get yeah. there? And then yeah. what if you don't get there in 10 years? Right. How are you going to feel about that? What is, how's that going to mm -hmm. affect you? And when you can make those small goals of, you know, for some people, it could just be, okay, this is what I want to do today or this week. But I think having, having those small, small goals and then having the lengthy goal, maybe just being that year of like, okay, by the end of this year, I want to try to have these things done. Um, I think that it's realistic. And even if you can't achieve that at the end of the year, it, you can kind of move that into the next space. But mm -hmm. when you look at it, it's such a large chunk of time. Um, it can be really, you're right. It can be really hard to kind of imagine how you're going to achieve those things because everything kind of has to keep moving at the same pace or there can't be anything major that happens in your life that you was unexpected or right. Yeah. There can't be a pandemic that sweeps through <laughs> and like changes how the world yeah. works. Um, so that's, sure. a, that's a good way to look at it. Um, yeah. And along the same lines, I think something that's really helped both my art and my work is actually just understanding psychology better. I spent a lot mm -hmm. of time just watching like, I don't know, professional psychologists talk about things, uh, mm -hmm. you know, on YouTube, uh, especially since the beginning of the pandemic. And I think it's just helped me understand a lot about like myself, my productivity, how I work, how to like take care of myself physically and mentally, like, and it helps so much like your work, like I think more than you would expect. Um, right. And more than like directly studying or like, uh, learning arts, learning about how to do things is it's so helpful and so important. I think pretty yeah. underrated. Oh, I mean, I, I think especially in the, the professional world um, in the entertainment world, part of it's not just being talented and hardworking and good at what you do, but a lot of it also is how you execute it and how you produce your work um, mm -hmm. and the systems you set up. A lot, a lot of those people that are doing really well or you know art directors it's like they can kind of find better ways to do things and that right. is very much connected to uh you know your, the psychology of people that you're working with yourself how you mm -hmm. interact with those people communication um and how you deal with any type of you know drama or problems or you know how do you problem solve um Mm -hmm. But I think that's that's great. I don't think I've ever really heard people to like listening or watching, you know, videos on psychology and applying that to their art um, or at least not not directly. It's almost usually like indirectly like, oh, mm -hmm. this artist talked about this psychologist who we learned about, you know, um, but that's, right. that's a cool way to uh, kind of learn a bit more about yourself and maybe how you operate and how yeah, you can exactly. make yourself better. Yeah, um, I would recommend going straight to the source. Like I could talk about what I learned, but I would really rather people just actually listen to real psychologists and not me like right. regurgitating stuff. That, that would make sense. Yeah. Maybe that's your next goal next year. Yeah. Just work work on getting your psychology degree. <laughs> yeah, become that a psychologist. Start that. Yeah. No. This isn't working out. This isn't working <laughs> out, Grace. Right. Um, but back with, back to what you were saying about, you know, how I started with digital art, uh, you know, back in the day, uh, it was really cool because, you know, back in like the mid 2000s, uh, early 2000s, even there was really like a much, much smaller community of digital artists. Um, mm -hmm. and it's so weird because there were some names that were just huge back in the day. And if you were like into digital art at all, like you would definitely see them, you know, on the front page of DeviantArt or like whatever popular um, right. like Mac publications were at the time. But then some of them have just like 
disappeared into the nether like they were never heard from again <laughs> like after right. after that right. era um i guess it's a testament to like how fast things move and change in the digital age Completely. Um, but there's also a weird sense of like nostalgia for like the early days um, uh where you're yes. just getting like a fire hose directly to yes. your face um yes. it was definitely not the case back in the early days right like no. um yeah i feel like and you I'm, could only find like one tutorial on something if back in well yeah the, in most people's day. yeah bandwidth and what you could actually your internet connection and mm -hmm. you know playing videos on the internet for a while oh for sure yeah that great either yeah. and you know you didn't have your you didn't have your phone on you you didn't have an mm -hmm. iphone yet and um you didn't have the pressure i think a big thing uh, is the pressure of social media as well oh yeah and how that sure. affects artists and having to churn out content and yeah uh, i mean it's great in one ways it's a double-edged mm -hmm. sword it's like it's great because the amount of work that you get to see and kind of the challenge it provides but on the other end it's, it doesn't provide any kind of downtime for the artist to like really get weird and make something new and different because he always has this nagging like get, we, i need to produce content yeah yeah for these people so that i can keep the followers so that i can get the good jobs and yeah so, um, it's it's hard not to get sucked into that like i i try you know i i try to like limit it but i i still feel it like the fact that like oh no it's been gosh has it been a month since i posted art what, what happened oh, yeah. <laughs> but i like i'm like drawing so much but a lot of it is like again client work that i can't show yeah and i think as long as you keep in mind it's like that space isn't going anywhere and mm -hmm it's okay to take time off. It's okay to not have to do those things. And it's okay yeah. for people to not know what you're doing. Like mm -hmm. it's, you know, you don't always have to. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, but so w this is really, I'm like talking, I'm like watching this. I was like, we're in a new kind of design. This is, is this the third iteration? Uh, Yeah, more or less. Uh, I mean, I, the first I one mean, doesn't count that much because it's pretty basic. It's just a pretty basic um but yeah i'm just really going with what i'm feeling um i like so, this one a lot That's yeah just, it's, i it's, i like I, the... even though it's like almost like white more a little more white and pure it's like it feels mm. to me i in, of course my dark man i'm like instantly like it's blood soaked dress <laughs> the it's pumpkin blood <laughs> yeah she's been carving pumpkins all night oh yes <laughs> but um, this is really beautiful yeah, I do. I, I I'm a sucker for like gradient colors. I just I just really like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's I do the like where this is going. Digital tool. Yes. Oh Gradients. yes. Um, yeah, this is this is pretty. Yeah, but I'm trying to make them different enough from each other so we have like a good choices to choose from. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking about right now. If I want to make some stuff darker. Uh, especially the metal. I want to make sure that I don't just keep everything kind of golden. I'd really like mm -hmm. to have some variation there. So, right. Let's try to see if we can darken this up. Yes. Kind of create a little bit of contrast between those mm -hmm. two values. Now, is the is the color of the hair going to change with any of them or do you are you kind of um, you want to kind of keep it darker so. okay. uh i don't know I'll, yeah it'll probably change and maybe the kind of like style. as it yeah as it moves yeah 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 i think i'll do that after though like after we decide on a design and then i can adjust the hair to fit the design really? Well, people are digging it so far. I'm excited to, I'm like, I can't wait for it to be rendered. <laughs> Where's, start adding the light already. Yeah. It's a process. It's a process, people. You can't, can't jump the gun. <laughs> Take your time, go through the steps. And the mm. fun thing about doing that live is 
you get to have participation and yeah for people, sure i'm excited yeah it's to kind of fun other letting people's it dictate. reactions yeah sure. exactly hmm. now i'm gonna go through some of my references to see if i can pick up anything that i like um i kind of like this one over here mm -hmm. this one over here because it reminds me a bit of like uh, so here in, in Canada, maybe in other mm -hmm. places in the world, uh, all the leaves turn really red for the most part, right? Um, like we right. have beautiful red, orange fall colors. Um, they're just starting to turn out, but actually I can see some from my window and it's really nice. So I'm going to see if I can do like a more reddish maple-y kind of color and nice. go from there. Yeah, we get, we get some of that in LA. Um, mm -hmm. but not as much as like back east or yeah um, right because there's a, we have a lot of evergreens um, mm -hmm. in southern california so not as much but you do we do get some of the trees and it is beautiful yeah i just love like really red maple leaves they're just such a gorgeous color i mean this is my favorite time of year so oh, yeah and we just uh, just had a like, God, we had a massive uh, thunder lightning storm mm -hmm. last night um, uh, in Monrovia, where I live on the foothills uh, in LA County. I swear, there's probably over a hundred lightning strikes. It was pretty intense. Oh wow! Yeah, I was I was like, okay, it's fall. I'm digging it. <laughs> Finally, got some rain. Yeah, I I don't like the rain, but I I do like the oh, weather man, I, that it's a bit more chilly. Um, right, I like right. the temperature, but not the not the rain. I can't stand rain. You should come to LA. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it never rains. It For is sure. hot though. Um, I'm trying to make like a uh, dark metal color, but it just turned kind of chocolatey. Wade had a good question. Um, mm -hmm. You said, uh, Grace, at what point do you address the background? Do you already have something in mind when you start or do you figure it out based on the color palette as you go? Um, so that's a good question because I wasn't planning on doing a background for this. Um, but since We're yesterday's forcing chat, you into it. yeah, um, but since yesterday's chat, uh, if I do have time, I will do like probably add some ornamentation. Like I, like I was saying, it wouldn't be a full background. Um, if I did want to do a full background, I would definitely, definitely plan it out in advance. Uh, mm -hmm. probably at the very like beginning as probably like the first thing I would do is like okay. character thumbnails with background. Um, kind of do color comps for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, because otherwise I, I just find it really hard to, um, cause that's why I was asking you yesterday, um, what you think about like how to incorporate characters into backgrounds. Cause that's something I really mm -hmm. struggle with. And if I don't right. tackle it at the beginning, it's like, it's kind of over, like it's never going to be quite as good as what I'm looking for, I guess. Uh, yeah. so yeah, it's something I have to really actively do like at the, from the very first step, I feel. Yeah. I mean, it's. It isn't easy and it mm -hmm. kind of just depends on if it's a more of like a painterly background that's just kind of supporting the character and it's more abstract and there's nothing else the story comes through with the colors and that's about it there's no other like mm -hmm. objects or architecture um yeah i feel like that way it's it is that to me that reminds me a lot more of kind of oil painting mm -hmm. where you're kind of using more like muted colors to kind of build up this background and like you're you're kind of using that to be able to know where to pop your colors on your foreground and your figure. Um, but I think it's one of those things that definitely it changes with whatever you choose. Cause it has to work with the, mm -hmm. you want it to work with the foreground. You don't want, you don't want the background to be the primary thing you want the, you know, yeah. the figure in the foreground. That's your, that's your first look. That's your primary figure. Right. And so you want, the, that background to just enhance it and so if it's not enhancing it then there's no point mm -hmm. but i know with it it can be hard because especially with character design and and uh you don't always need it it's not yeah, necessarily exactly. something that you have to do um i'm totally guilty of that where i won't even think about it and then like at the end and like presentation I was like ah, 
maybe I should do something. <laughs> yeah. And by then yeah, I'm exactly. like, I'm like, don't even want to do it. And I'm just right. like, oh man, I should have, I should have started with this or at least put some more thought into it. But yeah, it can be difficult to, to integrate backgrounds. Some people are great at it. Mm -hmm. Some really good designs, and, but you can always do simple stuff too. You know, it's like you said, simple gradation or um, just to kind of knock back the white so that your highlights pop through a little bit more. Uh, yeah, if you're doing like character design for concept art, it's very unusual that you would really need any kind of background, but it Completely. does just look nicer, right? Um, if you have yeah, something. like a, yeah, usually uh, ones that I really like are either you know um, th exactly some type of gradation mm -hmm. or the like um, you're gonna see where kind of the ground is so that you have a place for uh, you know a cast shadow or something to kind of ground your character. Um, that's why, you know, so many artists use that gray tone. It's because you get that neutral gray that mm. you can kind of build your values off of. Um, but yeah, I do, I love this, like that your image you have in your top right of your reference. That's yeah. like that oil painting feeling where you're kind of building light and value around your figure. And it's just enhancing the figure. And there's not a lot going on there, but it's you can yeah, see exactly. the texture, you can see the brush stroke, and it's it's just enough to make it feel like a finished painting more than yeah. just a character design. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely like simple and effective, that one. Yeah. But it is one of those things where you don't you don't want to include it if you're not gonna have a nice finished look to it. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, Andrew was asking. He joined late yesterday. He was okay. asking if it was started in Illustrator. And Andrew, everything that we've been doing, everything Grace has been doing, has been with Photoshop. Yes. And I believe even the the drawing, the sketch, everything that you started with with the figure, that was all in Photoshop, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's just the software that I'm most comfortable using. It's definitely the one I've been using the longest for digital painting. So even stuff like making memes or screenshots I would do in Photoshop because I'm just so used to the shortcuts that it takes me like, it's, you know, it's got all the things. no time at all. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I remember, yeah, like we were talk, uh, talking earlier about kind of the earlier digital days, mm -hmm. especially on the internet and yeah you would tell people like, Oh, what do you, what do you paint or how do you do it? And you're like Photoshop. And they're like, huh? Like, you know, most mm. people have no, had no idea that you could paint in Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah. Back exactly. then. And I was like, I was like, yeah, that's, that's all I use it for. Mm. <laughs> so this is kind of moving into that almost like how you had it blocked out with that purple and like mustard color that yellow but yeah muted much more muted and darker tones um it was but then i decided i don't like it so now i'm changing it up again <laughs> never mind <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know it just wasn't quite looking the way that i wanted it to so now i'm seeing if i can like make a gradient work we'll see yeah it's kind of cool So when I actually started digital painting, it was really because, uh, you know, I was a kid watching a lot of anime and I just wanted to draw my favorite anime characters. I mm -hmm. think that's probably where a lot of artists around that time started. Um, yeah. Just like with fan art and stuff that inspired them. And then it kind of spawned entire careers and like, you know, great illustrators and that kind of stuff. I yeah, think a completely. lot of people were inspired by anime animation just really beautiful like children's media that kind of they grew up with and then it really uh became something that was really popular and a huge influence on i think like even the current state of what's popular uh especially on instagram there's a lot of like kind of cute anime style drawings oh yeah yeah it's kind of amazing um just the influence and impact it's had 
yeah um, for sure on a lot of american artists as well mm -hmm. um and i mean i love the combination of the two of kind of the japanese aesthetics the anime aesthetics with you know like american sensibilities kind of mixed into mm -hmm. it and like more american style and it's kind of there's so many so many cool styles coming out right now and just but i especially working on a comic that i've been doing mm -hmm. for action scenes or anything like really intense emotion that's i i love referencing my manga and you know what i have available and it's, it's there's just something about it of getting maximum impact from one drawing mm -hmm. um that they do so well so but yeah there is something i don't know what it is it's so approachable or with with uh anime and, and the characters and definitely runs the gamut of like very cute chippy characters to you know, like the darkness <laughs> yeah for sure what do you usually have on hand to reference oh i i mean i've uh when i watched uh akira and then i went back and i finally like bought the entire volume oh wow and then went and found his other books like uh, i think it's called domo there's another one and it's about uh the katsuhiro otomo did with the uh, the um it's like a little girl in an apartment complex and like she has these uh telepathic powers and so does this other old man who's been like terrorizing the complex and like mm -hmm. there's a huge you know battle between them and it's totally insane um but what else like uh it's a berserker right and then um, oh yeah god there's some other ones there's some other oh dragon ball z i've i've collected <laughs> a few of those from mm -hmm. i it's funny i find a lot of this stuff at thrift stores too oh for sure just because I used to be up in the Bay and so I would wander around Berkeley and they'd always have great, uh, great used bookstores and Goodwills. And there's always a ton of art books and, and manga and stuff. So I've gotten some but, pretty good manga collections from, um, used bookstores. Yes. But also like library sales when they just mm, sell like old mm -hmm. books in, in bulk and for like, I don't know, 50 cents each. It's oh yeah. Great. That sounds awesome. Yeah. I'm going to have to throw Naruto in there too. I <laughs> There was yeah, definitely sure. a time period for a couple of years where like my friend was obsessed and I was like, this is Yeah, this there is was amazing. a time period when I was obsessed. It was brief, but the, it was a uh... <laughs> The character design, I was just like, these are all really original character. Yeah. Like just the idea of like their attributes and what their powers were. And I was like, mm -hmm. this, is, this is really cool. So I think I'm going to change it up and do a greenish one and then maybe okay, we'll cool. kind of go through what we've done and compare and uh, probably pick one out and keep going from there. Yeah. And just uh, just so you know, and just to remind everybody at 11 o'clock, we're going to be doing the artist spotlight for about five to 10 minutes. So you'll have a little bit of time after that as well, probably like another mm -hmm. 15, 20 minutes after that. Just so just kind of keep that in mind as we uh, move forward. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So um, this will be my last color variation, I think. And then, uh, we'll yeah, see. perfect. Um, I don't really like green in, in general, just as mm -hmm. a color, but I actually think this works pretty well, like a nice olive green. It's yeah, pretty planty. Um, yeah. So I'll try to make this work. And just a reminder to everybody, if you're over on YouTube watching this, please come over to Behance at b.net slash Adobe Live so you guys can communicate in the chat and we can respond to you because we're moderating it here and we can't do it over on YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube, come on over to b.net slash Adobe Live. You can ask Grace any questions you want about her painting process and we can hang out. So come on over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited to see how you start to render and lay out your, like how you work on your layers. It's always so oh, yeah, different with sure. everybody. Um, yeah, right now they're just, uh, like I was saying yesterday, usually with variations, um, even if I'm not naming them properly, I will organize different variations into different folders. So at least they're right. easy to filter on and off. 
Yeah, um, you're not clicking on and off like 40 different layers. Yes, to find exactly. Where that her hair is. Such a is nightmare. Or, yeah. Gosh, no. That's that's old school. That's the, <laughs> the way I used to paint. Uh, Randall Casey asked, what do you think is the hardest part for your character designs? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, I guess, as I was saying yesterday, I always find just clean sketch and lines difficult, but I don't think right. that's really what the question was asking. Um, in terms of the design, uh, I guess it's it does depend on whether I'm doing the design for myself uh, or mm -hmm. for a client. Cool. Um, for a client, it's really to, uh, I think, understanding what they want and giving them what they want instead of what they're asking for <laughs> is kind of like right. the mind reading aspect um, right. of working for clients in general. Yeah. Um, and when it's working for myself, um, other than finding the time to do work for myself, hmm, I don't know. I... I have to think about that one okay. because I feel like this whole process has been more or less pretty smooth. So yeah, um, yeah I don't know if that matches with, with uh, your impression as you're watching, but I don't feel like there was any particular point where um, I got super stuck or was struggling. Probably deciding on the direction uh, is always something that's a little bit difficult because right. um, because you if you make a choice, it means you're deciding not to do the other ones, right? So mm -hmm. for me, like at least mentally, it's always um, maybe that's kind of a difficult part. If you really have to decide on one uh, direction to go in, it does mean abandoning all the other directions. Yeah. But on the other hand, yep. like if you have time, you could always just render out the other ones as well, uh, which right. is usually what I end up doing. And yeah, that takes a while <laughs> when you can't decide on a direction and you just do all of them. Um, yeah, that's, it's time that's definitely, that's a pretty hard, I mean, uh, I think it's one of the hardest parts of doing any project is mm -hmm. really defining what, what you want to finalize. And, yeah. Cause sometimes the client's not going to know and it right. might not be clear to you and you kind of just have to use your best judgment. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you make the wrong decision. And like you said, sometimes you have to go back and do other ones to see if those work better. So yeah, that, that definitely is a hard part, I think, with character design because mm -hmm. options are limitless as well. Yeah, exactly. Things that you can add or accessories or just, you know, you could spend 10 hours on a necklace being like, oh, we could have this or it could be that or, it could, you know, it's mm -hmm. it really is. Uh, that's what makes it fun, too. Yeah, it makes it hard, but also awesome because you really can do whatever you want. I mean, it's it's such a fun thing to design characters. Um, I've done character designs where I've just made. Um, so this was for an original character of mine, and I just ended up making something like eight outfit variations, and I made like a mini, you know, uh, HTML5 dress up game with it, where you could just switch between oh, wow. all the different variations. Oh, that's cool. Um, so when you really can't decide, that could be a direction Create to go in. Just do all of them, <laughs> do all of the variations, and then uh, see where that takes you. Yes, the most. All right. <laughs> Yeah, so, so we let's, have our let's, six, and uh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and once let's do some voting. It, yeah, move them into a new window so we can see them all at once. And then Wade's got the sweet straw poll that we Excellent. can use this time. <laughs> yes, so if you guys want to vote, that. Wade is going to put up a uh, link for a straw poll so we can actually see everybody's votes and we can count them instead Four, of guessing. Oh, yeah, like that one. Five, and then... Six. Save this. So you're just duplicating all these layers onto one and then yes, exactly. creating a bigger canvas so that you can just lay them out. Yeah. Three. 
And this mm -hmm. is just a good way to view your options for yourself as well. Yeah, exactly. Because sometimes looking at them independently, you're not going to really see how they work or don't work. Um, oh, for sure. So it's like, always, I always yeah, it's this. always good. Yeah. I think I switched up. Okay, it doesn't matter. I'll just um, and I'll number these as well, so they're perfect. Easy to see. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and just a pro tip of if you're doing client work, always number your variations. Um, yes. Yeah. It's so much easier to discuss it when they're like, uh, the oranges, red one with yeah. like the thing. It's like, oh, you mean four. Yeah. Like, yeah <laughs> exactly. Four. Like, yeah. Perfect. Always just number it. It'll be so much makes easier. It makes it so easy. It's a good tip. Yeah. So if you're just joining us, Grace has made these six different variations of the dress and the costume here for this. Uh, we want an autumn goddess, I think is this kind of vibe. Um, so either in the chat or if we can get a straw poll, I don't know if that's possible, Wade, but go ahead and vote on the one that you want to see her uh, refine and finish up. Do you have a favorite, Grace? Or is there anyone that le you're um, leaning towards? Well, looking at them all together, uh, I kind of like four just because I really like the color itself um mm -hmm. not so much like the different combination of colors but i just i really like red <laughs> so yeah um i'm a bit biased uh i will say that six turned out a bit better than i thought it would um just because yeah I'm that's biased against pretty cool <laughs> so yeah. um but i think any he of these is everywhere work, really. hmm? yeah i i i big in green because green could have some really and you could even do some pops of red in that green too mm -hmm. um and that then I think I agree with you. I really like three still. Kind okay. Of leaning towards this. Let's see. Yeah. So we got the straw pull up. Let's see okay, what's... cool. So I'll take a minute to wait for the results. Just see the results. Let's see. All right. So far, looks like number three is in the mm -hmm. lead. Looks like it. And I will just remind everybody right now that we've got Adobe Max coming up, um, scheduled for October 26th through 28th. It's a completely virtual experience with a ton of guest speakers um, from the entertainment industry, from the cooking, the restaurant industry, from movie industry, everything. Um, check it out. You can register for free on max.adobe.com. Um, it should be really awesome. I think they're going to go over a bunch of stuff uh, that's going to be new for the creative cloud as well. Um, and the Adobe Live right after that is going to be awesome as well. So we're going to be using a lot of those new tools. So if you guys want to join in on the fun, check out all the, the talks and the conferences. Uh, 26th through 28th of October, Adobe Max, uh, max.adobe.com. So check it out, go register and make some time. All right. What do we got? Ooh, it's a tight race. Yeah. Seven to six. Are you are you waiting for four to win? Uh, <laughs> you to do I don't know. More, you're trying uh, to give it a little more time. Like, Come on, well, I was hoping for it to be more decisive. Okay, it looks like three is a, has a narrow lead over four. Um, so let's go with that, I think. Yeah. All right. Or maybe another right. 10 seconds. Any last minute votes? Um, if not, let's go with head with three. Uh, so I'm going to hide all the other color. Oops. Nope. <laughs> hide on the other color variations and then go from there. So at any time, when you like, so what size are you working on right now? Because sometimes I know when I start to get all these different layers and options at a certain point, I kind of just throw it onto a new canvas or is that do you ever have any issues with that, uh, with the size that you work at, or do you uh, usually just keep your entire work as you move? For me, yeah, I do like to, um, at like maybe two times throughout the entire stage, I do like to cull the other options. Uh, okay. So that's what I'm going to do right now, since I okay. think there's something, I think the file is getting a little bit too big for my computer, possibly. 
So I'm just gonna. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, I'm not really. I run sure. into that, and <laughs> I'm like, oh, that pinwheel's back. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So instead of like restarting, I'm just gonna resave the file and see if that will help. Uh, now I'm gonna up the size again as well. So I'll just double the size, and this is kind of a nice, comfortable size for me to work at for okay, rendering. Cool. Uh, and we're just gonna continue from here. Perfect. So I think I'm going to start back with the base and the face and the hair. Uh, like we were talking about before, about changing the hair color. Um, let's just see if we can get like a nice ombre in there, maybe. Yeah. Get those gradients in there. Yeah. Let's do it. I want to do like a hair where the inside is like a lighter color than the outside. That's awesome. I know. I just, I love that look. So let's well, try and also the kind of contrast with the, the slightly darker um, yeah. armor piece or costume piece that's happening there. Yeah, the exactly. And it kind of adds to that, like this glow or radiance, you know, of this being this ethereal being. Right. I'm going to pull up a reference on the left as well, just so I have something to aim for, but I won't really be following it exactly. Yeah, and that's really cool. I mean, I I don't do that probably, and I feel like sometimes I should where sometimes when I'm rendering or moving through a piece, I can. it's easy to get lost in, in your steps or maybe um, not really able to picture or get to the type of lighting you want or something. And mm. so it's kind of nice having some reference available just to be like, okay, that's that's where I'm going. That's kind of what I want. Um, it's yeah. good. It's good to see you using all this reference. I know that, that's going to help a lot of people. Even when there are times when, you know, I've drawn faces like a million times before, I know what a face looks like, but it's still mm -hmm. good just to have that, um, I don't know, like a, like a cushion to fall back on. If you just yeah, like completely. draw a blank or like, I don't know, you're worried about the piece not going well. It's just really nice to have that safety net where it's like, you know, no matter what I do, I have something there that will help guide me through the process. And I just find yeah. it really helps, um, especially if you're an artist that feels any kind of anxiety about your work. Like if you're working on something really important for a big client and you're like, oh no, I don't want to mess this up. It's just good to have as much, you know, reassurance as possible. And that's all references Definitely. are for me. And are we using the hard round brush still? Is that... Uh, so this brush is just like a textured brush. Um, okay. I think the, the base texture is, uh, I believe it's either just included with Photoshop or with like um, one of the Kyle T. Webster brush packs. Um, it's right. one of the basic ones. The most important thing, uh, and I do want to show this, is just how I blend things. Um, and is that is that based on the pressure of the Yes, pen? exactly. Okay. It's uh, the variation is in transfer and then the opacity is controlled by pen pressure and the flow as awesome. well. Awesome. Um, as I was saying yesterday, this is like a workflow that's really difficult to replicate on the iPad, which is why uh, I don't really paint on the iPad despite having one. Right, um, right. But yeah, it's just about, so all I'm using here is two colors, right? Like the base color here, um, right. base color, and then the shadow color here, and that's it. Everything else is just blending between these two colors. Um, right. I do this to simplify the process. I try to, I tell this to my students as well. Um, it just helps to narrow down the amount of variables when you're painting and really focus on uh, getting the form um, between the base color and the shadow. And then we'll worry about all the other stuff like highlights, subsurface and everything else later. Right. And it's almost, I mean, it's almost working in, in like a gray tone or neutral mm -hmm. tone where yeah, exactly. you really are just, you're focusing on value. You're not worried too much yet about the temperatures of values mm -hmm. or anything. It's just really focusing on the rendering. Um, yeah. Which, yeah, is a really great way. It, and especially if color isn't something because I, I know some people that's like they'll go straight in with colors they paint or um you can you know block out the shadows and then build up the lights and the mid values as you go but i mm -hmm. i have seen this process before and i do love it um because i feel like it is much easier to grasp for a lot of students and artists um 
because you really just you're laser focused and like yeah. you're, you're just turning form that's all you're doing right now you're just focused on the shadow shadow forms and mm -hmm. turning those into the lighter planes and and it, it actually gives you a space to kind of tweak later as well right exactly uh, is this all done on a separate layer that you're doing right now uh yes okay that's what i sometimes thought sometimes i, I just... mess up and forget but yeah uh, oh yes. yeah i've been there <laughs> like 30 minutes in and i was like oh, oh for sure. no yeah that's the wrong layer yeah because that way you can tweak it you can adjust the levels on it the hues i yeah. mean it really gives you a lot of options at that point And Wade has provided a nice link to the Kyle Webster brushes. Obviously, he provides a lot of the brushes for Photoshop, or at least the main ones for Adobe. Um, pretty much find anything. I think he's mm -hmm. made every single brush you could imagine. Oh, for sure, yeah. I really like his watercolor brushes. What's that? Oh, uh, his watercolor brushes in uh -huh. uh, in Photoshop, actually. I think they're quite mm -hmm. good. Yeah, definitely. I could probably noodle on the face forever, but I'm realizing that I will have to <laughs> move on yeah. pretty soon. Yeah, you got, um, you got 30 minutes before our artist spotlight. So right, yeah, you right. know, it's a kind of a good guideline. I will just darken up the eyes and then I will definitely move on after that. And since you're doing, um, this is going to be a lighter dress. So mm -hmm. I'm curious if you're going to, um, you will be confronted by the, uh, the background and right. possibly because of the the lightness of the dress and you don't you know with the, the white background it probably is something that you have to look at at some point um but you can always the cool thing with all of this and it's i do it a lot is if you don't finish at the end of the stream you can always finish it afterwards and post it later Right. Yeah. I've done that several times where I'm like, <laughs> I thought I was going to finish this and I definitely didn't. Um, so don't feel, you know, obviously do what you can, but don't feel like you have to have it finished at the end of the stream. Okay. Um, yeah, for sure. Cause I would rather you, you know, really get it to a place where you want it to be. Um, because the, the process is awesome and we're going to see it no matter what. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I always try to remind myself and others. It's like, the goal isn't to get to a finished place. The goal is for this, especially is the process and really seeing the process and, and making sure that this is how, how you paint and this is how you want to render something. And you don't want to be rush into the finish line and trip and not, not yeah, get what you sure. want out of this. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can't I'm definitely going to have to a little bit. do some polishing <laughs> later. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. 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 Well, that's totally fine. So I'm just adding a bit of shading now to the hair, um, especially because there's going to be a lot of cast shadow for the very back of the hair. But I still mm -hmm. want to leave that uh, bright orange here at the front to yeah. contrast with the outfit. Um, with your professional work, mm -hmm. has where is most of your uh, freelance jobs? Like, what is it for uh, book illustration? Do you do any like fantasy trading cards? Is it commission based mostly? Uh, where do you usually kind of land with some of that stuff? Yeah, um, this year I've been doing a lot of uh, 
work for both uh, book covers and also mm -hmm. on like book related merchandise. So, mm -hmm. uh, for example, one thing that's become pretty popular, especially I think during the pandemic, is these book subscription boxes where they send you, uh, you know, like a box of cool book related merch every month. Um, oh, so I've been cool. doing quite a bit of work for that. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been really fun. Um, I basically just like draw cool characters from books. And then I end up discovering really cool books from that. Um, and then I draw more characters from books. So it's become kind of a very good um, feedback loop, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, like I was saying, like it's gotten me back into uh, reading, um, which I, it's something that I really like to do as a kid. But I think as people get older, it's always harder to find the time to really oh, sit yeah. down and do that. Um, mm -hmm. But it's just been... I think a great uh, step for me this year that I've been doing a lot more of that. Yeah, that's awesome. I, yeah, I've never, I mean, I guess I've heard about these bundled things that you can subscribe to for toys or food mm. or, you know, so it would make sense that there'd be one for books, but I guess I, yeah. haven't, I haven't seen anything yet. I'm curious to go check that out. Yeah, what's for the, sure. Uh, what's the company that um, um So I've with? done work for Fairy Loot and Owl Crate. Um, these are, so books, box, book boxes in general, I think they're most at, mostly found for young adult books. Um, and they're mm -hmm. also the most popular on Instagram and TikTok, uh, two platforms that I'm not that active on. <laughs> um, but that's usually where you would find them and find more information about them if you're interested. Um, right. it's just, I don't know. I think, I think it's really cool to have like these collectible items and they help get more people into reading, especially younger audiences. Um, and it's something I think I would have really liked. Um, I'm a bit older than the target audience, I think, but um, it's something that I definitely would have really liked um, as a teenager. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's so much, so much cool stuff now. Mm -hmm. These spoiled kids and everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I think this is good enough for the hair. Okay. um again just being cognizant of the time the time yeah yeah my photoshop is lagging a little bit for some okay. reason uh but i think i can still continue from here oh, yeah, so now cool. i want to do is just do the same thing that i did with the face but with the body um mm -hmm. and try not to spend too much time on the part that i know will definitely be covered by right. the cloth. Normally I would, um, if I was doing like more, if I was doing more ver rendered out variations uh, for the character, or if I had more time, I do want to apply the rendering to the entire body. Mm -hmm. um, but for this one, I think I'll just stick with the parts that we'll see. Yeah, cut some corners. Yes. That's definitely. So do you, do you try to do a full render on each piece or layer or area? So it's like you just did the hair um, and, and the face and now would you kind of just make your way down the body and then the next thing would be the metal or the dress and kind of do all of the dress or do you, is it more of like how you move down the painting or is it kind of like by item or texture? Uh yeah i mean there's a lot of different things that go into the order but uh one thing for sure is that i enjoy doing the face and hair and i feel like it sets the tone for yeah, uh completely. what i want to do for the rest of the painting so that's really important mm -hmm. to do first um and i <laughs> we were just talking yesterday about how much i hate drawing the feet so that's usually <laughs> something i do last and then everything else in between right yeah feet um, are last feet are yeah. gross <laughs> exactly um but usually i do this so if i have time i do have like different uh level of detail rendering so let's say like i'm trying to get everything to the same level right now that you see on the face and hair like it's detailed right. enough at this zoom level but if i really wanted to finish illustration maybe i'd want to mm -hmm. go back and do like an additional um level of detail on top so then in right. that case, I would just kind of repeat the whole step, starting with the face and then the hair and then go down from there. Gotcha. And as the the base um, shadow color that you're using, are you just 
eye dropping right under the chin where it's its darkest. Yes, exactly. Do you ever find a situation where you'd have to almost put it somewhere else on the canvas so you could eye drop it? Or do you always make sure you have a space uh, that's going to be untouched? I just know sometimes yeah. I'd be like, God, I lost that color that I was, I have to kind of go back and find it or do like the true layer drop if I use a multiply layer. Mm -hmm. Uh, Generally for me at this stage where I'm doing kind of like the two tone um, form that, mm -hmm. that like this level of rendering, I would usually have both, both the base color and the shadow color just somewhere on the character itself as soon as possible. Right. Um, and then at later stages, I, I don't typically uh, put like a color palette on the canvas anymore. I do mm -hmm. know there was probably a time when I did that and I do know other artists that do it. Um, but for me, it's just, I don't know, not a part of my workflow, I guess. I've gotten used yeah, to no, totally. not doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if it helps, like definitely something uh, people can try for themselves. If you guys are just joining us, um, we've got Grace Jew here, and we are working on day two of our fantasy character illustration. Um, I believe it's we're calling her our autumn goddess. Is that yeah. okay? Yeah, we've got go that's that. yeah, let's go with that one. Um, we've chosen the color for the, the dress and the, the costume. Um, yeah, so this is we've got about another 20 minutes before we do our artist spotlight of the day. Um, so please stick around for that. And if you guys are over on YouTube, come on over to Behance at b.net slash Adobe Live so you can get and ask your questions in the chat and we can respond to you. Yeah, uh, Aaliyah Alada says, amazing how shadowing can make it look so real. Um, it is pretty incredible how quickly uh, a flat 2D image can start to look 3D and can start to build form with just a little bit of shadow. Yeah. This is a great brush you're using. Um, it is. It, yeah, that's why a, I it's use got a great it for feeling. Like yeah. All of my painting. <laughs> it's really just yeah. this one brush. Like most it's got of the this time. nice brush texture and it feels traditional. It doesn't mm -hmm. have that, doesn't have a very digital vibe to it. It's really nice. Yeah. It has enough of the texture, but not so much that you're struggling to blend stuff. Um, right, or it's distracting at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Wade's right. You can nominate yourself or another creative for the artist spotlight. Um, the tab is above the chat, as Wade has put down there. Thank you, Wade. Um, Angel's wondering, uh, what brush is it? Um, I know you showed us earlier. I can't remember the, is there a specific name for it or is it just within? A... I think it's, it's maybe one of the brushes that I might've tweaked. So yeah, I renamed it. Yeah. It's I all custom. It, so yeah. Yeah. But it's like based on a basic brush. Like, so I'm going to show you the, so this is like the base the texture of the brush of it. that it's based on. Um, again, I'm sure you could find either a similar texture or this exact one in many, many of the brush packs. And the most important yeah. thing is that you're able to make a very transparent and a very opaque um, brush stroke just by varying the how hard you're pressing down with your pen. Um, and that's the only like really specific property of the brush that you'll need. Right. And so you can apply those to maybe a different uh, brush tip and you would get very similar. Exactly. That one almost, it, it's almost like a charcoal colored pencil vibe, mm -hmm. uh, like an in-between. Uh, which is really nice um but yeah always mess with those opacity uh and the pressure and the flow um it's kind of how you get these nice these nice strokes without them being too harsh right and then and then that blending technique too i see a lot of uh, using the eyedropper finding those middle tones in between mm -hmm. so that you can blend to your darkest dark and your lightest light yeah exactly Uh, and I think part of the leg will be visible and then I will move on to painting the rest. Yeah. This part. So I'm just being lazy and only doing like the middle part of the leg. 
it's like you know when people shave or do <laughs> it's like yeah well, i'm really gonna see my ankles you know, maybe, you know i'm not gonna see i've got this mask on i don't need to shave <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> um or it's like when artists draw the hands behind the back so they don't have to draw it <laughs> Yeah, um, hold on. I'm only gonna have one hand available here. I don't, yeah, exactly. Or like Frank Frazetta, like where he, every yeah, every t every uh character is either standing in a pile of skulls or in some mud or in some water. <laughs> Never see the feet. Good tricks. I will have to learn from him. Mm -hmm. Well, this is something that I keep forgetting to mention when I'm hosting, but is really cool because I just did it recently is Behance is now allowing you to live stream um, through their platform, which is awesome. Uh, I just did it recently for Lightbox Expo. Um, and it's really cool. You can use a third party software um, and integrate it straight onto your profile. Um, so go check that out. It'll have live streams as the option. There's tutorials that uh, show you how to set it up. But um, it's really cool because you could also be featured on the uh, Behance website as well. Um, so yeah, it's a new thing that they're just starting to do. It's pretty cool to check out. Um, if you're into live streaming or have a Twitch or anything else, you guys can um, also do that on Behance as well. So pretty cool. Could you speak to what software they would need to stream on Behance? Oh boy, what did I use? I think I use, I think it's called OBS, Open okay, Broadcast cool. Software. It's like the yeah. third party. I know, I, I think there's multiple third okay. party softwares that you can use that you would for any other. Mm. Um, yeah, so I, there might be a couple that maybe aren't um, um, compatible, but I, mm -hmm. I'm pretty new to it. Um, so that's just my general, you know, pretty limited knowledge of it is the OBS is usually the kind of the most um flexible right it was, it was pretty easy to it took me you know maybe about a half hour to set up so but yeah live yeah there you go wade live streams obs yeah it seems like okay, that's good. probably the most popular thing to use yeah it's free um, it's open source mm -hmm. yeah yeah I really like obs it's the only one I use so that's why I was curious it's I had um, no idea I was like oh this is how everybody's customizing their <laughs> streams. Like it's amazing. You can yeah. build all these illustrations and boxes and containers and like you can have you know all yeah. these different scenes that you can go to. So that was kind of eye-opening for me to do the light box. I was like, okay, this is actually really cool. So now when you're when you're rendering this are you is there a time or is there like usually a general light source that you kind of use or mm -hmm. is this something like are you usually doing a top-down light source or do you think about the dynamic mm -hmm. lighting ahead mm -hmm. of time or is this or is there like usually kind of like a a comfortable place where you're like okay if i'm just doing a character design like to have it rendered and set up i'm just going to do this type of light source or what's your what's your process for that uh sure for just the design part i usually do like a really soft um i think in like pixel art they call it like pillow shading where it's just like a soft light right. from the front it's not very it doesn't look great but the point is really to get the design down make sure um all the form right. makes sense and then i would actually add the right. lighting later uh gotcha. i'm not entirely sure if we will have time to add the lighting this right, time. right right um but let me just continue and we'll see how far we can get yeah yeah no i was just i was definitely curious about that because mm -hmm. i know sometimes i have to go into it really thinking like okay this is what i want for this design to like maximum impact um mm -hmm. but then other times i'm i haven't even thought about the light source yet because i'm just solely focused on the design of the character right um i like to do the lighting separately personally mm -hmm. like uh i really like to focus on one thing at a time that's what mm -hmm. works better for me um so usually after i finish all the design um i will i might like make a version where all of the layers are merged and then what i would do is um add a new layer darken everything and then paint basically paint in the lighting on top mm -hmm. and then yeah 
that works pretty well for for me yeah and it's also it's um you're not you're not going over your layer you're not losing anything yeah exactly it's just kind of becomes a yeah, top layer exactly top layer mm -hmm. that you can adjust and manipulate yeah people are stoked uh angel says that looks badass i agree it's gonna be freaking cool when it's done i can already tell but you're gonna have to post it we're gonna have a timeline here when you have to finish it by <laughs> so right now yeah. what i'm doing uh i do still have the orange on a separate layer but mm -hmm. i'm just painting the base like the mm -hmm. white and then i'm gonna add the orange on top uh, okay. probably with like a blending mode or something it's just easier okay. to consider the light and shadow separate from yeah. the kind of gradient that goes on top mm -hmm. yeah i find myself using um a multiply layer mm -hmm. sometimes when i add shadows so that especially with all the gradients and yeah everything exactly. that it's it's yeah in traditional painting you just have to <laughs> you just have to do <laughs> slowly it, yeah. change the shadow color as you mm -hmm. yeah move over your painting but thankfully with digital you get to just put it on a separate layer there are also um i've also been learning more about like how traditional painters handle uh, client work for example and often mm -hmm. like you said about the comic artists that incorporate digital into their process um, there are traditional oil painters that also do that depending on uh, what they're looking for so I know um, Donato for example at uh, Donato Giancola he uh, will there's this painting of his I remember where he did add a huge chunk of like the the magical effects in digital mm -hmm. because he wanted the oil painting to look a certain way um and i think that's pretty oh, common when you're doing like traditional but you do no digital and there are certain constraints on client work as well um mm -hmm. i recently uh also saw a process from uh dan dos santos where he yes. like he printed i don't remember how he did it but he, so so he transferred like the ink from the like he printed out a tarot card in perspective and then he transferred the ink onto the canvas with mm -hmm. acetone and these are like just really mm -hmm. really specific traditional art processes right. that like i don't know like how how do people even think of that it's a i find it pretty crazy but um, yeah. it's so cool to learn about like all these tricks that they've come up with um to make their lives easier since traditional just takes so much work it's so much time and mm -hmm. people want to pay you less and less and less oh, for because sure, yeah. of the digital shortcuts. Yeah. Exactly. So it is, yeah, it is interesting. I mean, you know, um, it's like when the big change happened between, you know, practical effects to computer graphics, mm -hmm. and there's some people that are going to change with it and yeah. there's some people that aren't, but I think as an artist, you have to find the balance of, enjoying yourself and continuing to do something you love mm -hmm. but exactly. also know that the industry is always going to be changing and that you mm -hmm. need to be flexible if you want to work in it and yeah, you need to sure. learn new tools and you know i'm sure with the coming of you know virtual reality and ar and everything it's more and more we'll, you know learning 3d and, and other things and um, yeah there's a lot of stuff for i think 2d artists and painters it's like you really you got to be able to do so much it's kind of mm -hmm. crazy it's like well you can just paint is that it? or you can just do this and it's like i think there's a lot more expectations these days on on artists and how many things you can do and how many programs you can learn and oh for sure it's, it's really awesome and it's really hard it's, yeah it's a lot. if you don't like learning new things it's going to be hard to make a career yeah. out of it i think it's, yeah it's really yeah. hard really mm -hmm. hard uh just a heads up you have about eight minutes before we do the uh artist spotlight okay and how much time would i have after do you think so the artist spotlight we usually do for about five to ten minutes it'll probably mm -hmm. be about five somewhere in between then um and then after that you would have probably about another 10 15 minutes okay okay so, you, so yeah so you probably got about a little over 20 minutes left okay full painting time all right 
Um, so what I think I'll probably do is uh, wrap up the cloth before we go to the artist spotlight, um, mm -hmm. and then talk about metal for the last for the last little bit, and then yeah, that'd be probably awesome. all we'll have time for. Yeah, I mean, you've already gotten much further than I think this is as far as the detail and uh, the finesse of this painting. It's it's pretty impressive because it feels like you have a lot of time, but you really don't. I mean, it's no, really, it's, it's I really not thought four I, hours, you yeah, know, yeah. I really thought I'd get a little more done, but oh yeah, well. I'm getting ready to do this next week. So oh, okay. I'm, yeah, I'm planning mine out right now. I'm like, okay, how much? I remember it always goes faster than I wanted to. <laughs> yeah. And you said um, with your painting process, do you find yourself, do you, I know you kind of said you kind of like to work with background. It's like, just like watching movies or listening to mm -hmm. music or are, are you ever just in silence or is it something that's kind of nice to have to, as like a buffer? Um, That's a good question. I think if I'm doing something that really requires um, like, Think, active thinking about stuff like that's less mm -hmm. muscle memory and more like active problem solving so when I'm doing mm -hmm. thumbnails when I'm really uh thinking about like the perspective layout of the scene uh silence is good if I can get silence yes. it's kind of hard you know with like lawnmowers neighbors <laughs> that kind of stuff yeah. but yeah. if I can get silence yes for that absolutely uh for mm -hmm. everything else I do like to work with something on in the background I find that it helps me it actually helps me focus everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think a lot yeah. of artists have some something like that going on. Yeah, and I feel like especially uh, being freelance and I, I always have multiple projects going on and some mm -hmm. sometimes it helps me from not to think about other work that I have to do or right, get distracted, yeah. right? It's this weird, yeah. it keeps my butt in the seat and keeps right. me drawing, just mm -hmm. kind of having something on, um, yeah. I can agree with that. It's harder to do if you've got to really, really concentrate and come up with some new ideas. But yeah, for mm -hmm. the busy work, it is kind of nice to just have some. Although the downside is that sometimes I have trouble focusing if I can't find the thing <laughs> find to balance. like distract. You're sitting there scrolling. You're like, yeah, it's like, just oh, give me a I good video. Watch? I need a good yeah. TV series so I can focus, which an, sounds an like it makes later. no sense, but it's really like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'll do stuff with like um, either podcasts or mm -hmm. documentary or something where I don't, it's almost like I can just hear it and kind of maybe glance over occasionally, but it's not, you know, I, it, a little bit harder if I had like a crazy action movie. Right. Something like, whoa. I like watching a lot of animation. Oh, for sure. a lot of like for podcasts uh it's usually either true crime or like dungeons and dragons uh pretty much nothing else <laughs> just those two. yeah i know i love i listen to a lot of that with my wife uh mm -hmm. it's like uh was it to live and die in la and some other really good kind of like um yeah true crime stuff and missing persons and yeah yeah Yeah, I'm looking at this. I just finished watching um, Midnight Mass on Netflix. Mm -hmm. and this is kind of, I was like, this character could be in that world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like a surprise guest. Ah, Cartier Gates says, uh, New Job is. Um, he did, uh, actually, I passed away, I think, a few years ago. Uh, it was a Japanese uh, music producer. Who did the oh yeah samurai shampoo mm -hmm. uh he was really famous for that but did a lot of he kind of start i feel like he started the the uh, lo-fi kind of trip hop oh that's become sure. so so popular now yeah so iconic mm -hmm. other than lo-fi i find myself um listening to like 
early 2000s like punk music that's um mm-hmm. i don't know a, a bit of a meme like <laughs> you know like it's not um maybe like most people enjoy it like ironically but now i'm like you know what i embrace this it's it's 2021 oh, yeah. i like what oh, i my like gosh. <laughs> yeah oh yeah that's it i mean all the the guilty pleasures yeah um, yeah when i was younger now i'm like yeah, yeah. I, like I don't that. feel guilty don't about this yeah i don't have to worry about this i don't have to prove yeah, anything to anybody i'm an adult this is, yeah that's it mm-hmm. oh my gosh having having two little kids I, i'm like listening to like the bluey soundtrack and we got casper baby pants and <laughs> all kinds of stuff and i'm like mm-hmm. you know trying to find my songs i'm like okay i found a good one we can listen to this one on replay i'm okay with that <laughs> okay nickel no we can't sorry nickelback's not included in that ramble. no that's that's sorry. too far yeah sorry, buddy <laughs> you can't embrace that one that's yeah there's rules there's there are rules still that's one of them. No nickel back. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, Wade's reminding us we got about a minute until the uh, artist spotlight. Okay. So yeah, I think this yeah. is a good place for the class. Um, I just wanted to add a little bit more detail to support the gradient, um, give it a bit more shape. Um, no, yeah, we're um, ready whenever for the artist spotlight. All right, let me go ahead and set it up real quick and. Okie dokie. Here we've got, I gosh, I didn't look up her name, but it's either, I think it's Syra. Uh, oh gosh, I think, I think it's Syra. Right, or... I, oh no, Syrah? I don't even know. <laughs> I okay, hope it's Let right. us know um, if we're yeah. saying it right. Yep. Um, but yeah, very, very cool. And I can see this is a, a, a good match for what we've been doing as well. Um, you know, cinematic illustration very moody lighting a lot of uh flowing dresses like costume work um let's see let's check one of these out yeah and she's here with us in the chat right now oh hello hello let us know if we said your name right (laughs) yeah um so sire Um, is an artist that i've been following for a while online oh Uh, awesome you know okay okay yeah uh, Yeah, go ahead please recommended um, I've seen her, uh, I share a couple of Discord communities with her, and she has her own as well. Um, it, it's just really been really cool uh, seeing her journey, uh, seeing her process, the amount of work that she puts into each and every piece. Um, I've seen like so much of it over the past, I would say like year or so, mostly this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I'm really impressed by the way that she manages to weave storytelling and character work into uh, her fantasy illustrations and Definitely. I'd love to know your impression of her work yeah I mean I love uh, again just the the painterly aspects of this and uh, all of this kind of like texture in these trees and the dress and it it feels very refined but at the same time I can see a lot of the energy in the strokes um, mm-hmm. and nothing it doesn't look overworked which can be uh, really hard with digital it's really easy to overwork things um, oh yeah for sure but really beautiful color palette see do you see how nice she used that green mm-hmm. see that grace you can we can do green we're gonna yes. do green <laughs> <laughs> she makes the your green whole, work your whole painting is gonna turn to green yeah these are yeah. really beautiful um and yeah the storytelling elements are immediately uh, apparent mm-hmm. um always love the i'm assuming it's some vamp- vampire storyline here um gosh even this is cool this texture that you kind of see um on this right hand side just with you can tell a type of texture brush um yeah really nice lighting coming in from the back being backlit 
yeah, I, the the colors are gorgeous. Do you have a favorite one out of these that you'd want to talk about? Uh, I think the the dark, like the seventh one, uh, the fourth, the third one on the second row. Uh, this the, one, yeah, uh, the yeah. Lady Death. Yeah, I think that's one of the most recent. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I saw the whole process for this one. I saw it come to life, like all of the from the beginning to end. Um, I believe she said this is a piece that she'd been working on for a while uh, and then decided to revisit this year. And I think it really, really shows like the amount of um, work that she put into it. And also like just with the storytelling and composition, like I feel like there's so much going on there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really like this one and the rendering as well. Um, the mood, like the all, all the ways that it, the um, it, oh, if you just keep that right there in the way that oh, like, everything is framed um, around the figure in the back um, and mm -hmm. also the figure in the front. Yeah, like the I, I just yeah. think it's there's a lot going on here and I'm, I like all of it. Yeah, I was going to say there's a it's it's not an easy composition at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and to kind of get in all of those story elements is can be really difficult. Um, but yeah, this is really beautiful. The way the scythe kind of weapon kind of curls around and frames frames her in the background. Um, and it just pinpoints right on that uh, focal point with the coming out of her chest, the glowing, glowing symbol. Um, yeah, these are really beautiful and definitely excited to see more. Um, obviously on your journey, uh, this is, I mean, I really like the, uh, I think that second one up on the top, this one that I clicked on, I think is the one I'm, I'm loving the most. Um, mm. yeah, just overall composition wise, um, just the the brush stroke um, i'm really digging and uh the interaction between characters too um kind of this nice light where they kind of have this the focal point of them coming together it's really cool and it makes you wonder like what the story is i mean it's it's kind of open-ended but like you can kind of tell a little bit of the connection and yeah this is really beautiful stuff yeah for sure how long how long have you guys uh known each other when did you start seeing uh, the work uh definitely like after the start of the pandemic but otherwise you know the timeline's kind of fuzzy from there mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. this one's kind of cool too yeah really vibrant colors really nice some of the bounce light yeah these are awesome so if you guys are on behance is it you said it's syra i think is that so, right yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so go ahead and give Sarah Bain a follow. Yeah. Um, check out her work. It looks like she has her uh, Twitter and Instagram links on there as well. But yeah, beautiful work. Um, if you guys want to join the Artist Spotlight, you can nominate yourself or anybody else. Um, the tab's above the chat. But yeah, we love doing this stuff. It's cool just to highlight people in the community that are joining us, painting with us, friends of the artists. Um, mm -hmm. it's definitely one of my favorite things to do with the Adobe live. So definitely, uh, check it out and check out Cyrus work. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, I love definitely. highlighting people's work, so do it. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no community. Awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. Do you want to get back and try to finish up whatever we can with the metal and, and call it a day? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. Awesome. Um, Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. All right, so we're back with the last little bit of the rendering that we have. Um, I'm trying to going to try to get as much of the metal as I can with the short time that we have left. Yeah. Uh, so I'll mostly. Is there like a general time frame that you like to work with within, or that you kind of set for yourself for something like this? um that's a good question i i so i have actually started pretty uh tracking my time in a pretty detailed way uh mm -hmm. starting from the middle of this year just so i can better understand like how long something takes me uh and yep. i think the ballpark i aim for for most pieces is uh somewhere between 15 and 20 hours for just mm -hmm. the painting part so that doesn't really include like you know the research feedback back and forth and that kind of stuff right 
Um, right. But for just the painting, I think that's a good middle ground to aim for, uh, yeah. especially for my workflow and how I do things. Um, it's a nice middle ground between like, okay, I've definitely noodled on this for sometimes it. So there will be times when it takes longer for me, not because I'm spending more time painting, but because I spend time um, like redoing work that I've already done. It's kind of unfortunate, mm. but sometimes I've just accepted that like, sometimes I just need to redo it because it's not, it's not looking like I want it to. It's not going to quite pass the quality bar. Um, right. So that does still happen sometimes. And uh, I would not count it necessarily towards the hour, but I also, I don't like charge hourly or charge per project. So it's really yeah. more of like a, just on my own end, but I have to contend with that. Yeah, I I usually also try to avoid hourly mm -hmm. if possible because um, I feel like it can be kind of hard because um, really the the better you get and the faster you get it's, right that that can change and so I find it usually a lot easier to kind of have have a ballpark yeah. you know, this is how much it's going to cost for the project and then if we want to extend beyond that or if you want to make multiple revisions beyond that or whatever then I can add yeah, yeah, yeah. I can kind of price out how I'm going to add to that but I usually try to price the project as a whole um, mm -hmm. I feel like it makes it easier on me because <laughs> um, and I think sometimes easier on the client but I, I know mm -hmm. it's it's always different but yeah it really depends. Uh, but I saw mm -hmm. this quote. Um, I'm not sure who said it, but that like charging hourly punishes efficiency. And that's just something I think completely. about a lot. Yeah. Yeah, completely. It just doesn't. There's certain jobs where hourly makes sense. Right. Where, yeah. you know, if you're really only working for a few hours or it's for a mm -hmm. specific thing or. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's it's I think it's beneficial for the artist's state of mind to price it by the projects right and for the kind of clients i deal with um so i work with a lot of indie authors where mm -hmm. i just don't think it would make sense to charge hourly uh right especially for the kind and scope of work that i do for them right and that and it can kind of leave it open both ways right so mm -hmm. for certain ways it's like you can it gives you room to also understand who your client is and right it's like, well, I'm going to give you the same quality of work, but because you're somebody I like, I know your budget isn't as big. Right. I wouldn't charge you the same amount of money because I'm doing it for other reasons just than just doing this project for you because I think it's a big project. It's I also am doing it because I love what you're creating and I want to mm -hmm. be a part of it. And so I'll take a cut on my end, but I'm not going to give you less of a product i'm still going to give you the right. same product but i'm not going to charge you that same thing so yeah i mean i find yeah. myself with that thinking about that all the time is it really mm -hmm. you know depends on who your client is right um because no matter what you're getting paid nobody knows that on the other end so whatever mm -hmm. you're producing and putting out there that's what matters Right. So you have to think about that as well. It's like, well, I'm only getting paid $300 for this or something. I'm only going to spend this much time. You always have to think about who's going to see it beyond that and then mm -hmm. gauge what's worth it to you. Um, right. So, um, I do always try to make sure that uh, I'm being paid enough to give it my best effort and spend enough time yes. on it to make my best work. That's completely. really important, but beyond that, it's really just a matter of preference, project, like you said, the client as well. Yeah, you don't you don't want to be short, you know, shortchanging yourself. Yeah. And find your you don't want to be resenting your client. You don't yeah, want to be exactly. resenting the work. Yeah. Because then it's not going to be good work and mm -hmm. you're not going to enjoy it. And everybody's going to see that. So yeah, it's finding that balance is hard and it takes experience and work. Um but I think in the end, both parties appreciate it, um, being upfront right. and honest about what you need to get something done. Mm -hmm. So how comfortable do you think this dress would be? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I feel like the metal would be quite heavy. Yeah. Uh, 
So I would probably say not (laughs) very. (laughs) This is pure gold, people. Yeah, depending on how it's constructed. Well, if it's sturdy enough that the metal can sit over the hips, um, Mm -hmm. it probably won't be that uncomfortable, but it will be very stiff. Like you wouldn't be able to move around in it much, but it wouldn't be like backbreaking, I think. Mm -hmm. I hope that's the idea. Yeah, next we're going to put her in an action pose. So <laughs> Either she breaks or the metal breaks. Yeah. Well, that all that metal can just it's going to pop off. It's just like oh, a, yeah, it's going to transform yeah, into like a I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah, it's like, like a, a mecha kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so we're, this is a, we're, we're moving into a Transformer. Uh, yes, Metron. this is a sci-fi character design now. Yeah. She's a cyborg mm-hmm. under that skin. All right, we got about mm, five minutes left just so before we start wrapping it up. Okay, yeah, for sure. Um, I probably won't have time to do too much more on the metal, but if I did have more time, it would just be doing this, but for all of the yeah, rest maybe, of the metal. Maybe much. you can just quickly talk about what you're kind of aiming for when you're rendering the metal or how it's different yeah, for sure. Um, than your other approach to cloth or skin. Yeah. Um, the most important part about the metals, I'm not really going for realism here, but mm-hmm. uh, the important part is to have enough contrast in the metal. Um, like you can see, this is the dark color. This is kind of the mid-tone. Um, and this is the light color which is a much Mm -hmm. wider gamut than like the cloth in which this is a shadow color and this is the light color or the skin where this is the light and this is the shadow. Like metal, you really need the light and dark contrast, uh, especially in the crevices to make it look at least plausible, even though it's not still not going for realism because Mm -hmm. if it was realistic, you would need to take into account all of the reflections of the metal and what is in the environment. Right. But there's no environment here because there's no background. Yeah. So I'm just kind of winging it and going for something kind of plausible, um, but not necessarily realistic. Yeah. Well, and as you learn those rules too, it's that's that's what it's all about is kind of mm-hmm. taking taking those rules. But in the end, it's like, what's going to make it look best? Yeah. And exactly. sometimes realism isn't what's going to make it look great. Right. Sometimes having all those reflections can be really distracting or... yeah. You know, and th- that so, doesn't make sense for character design to really go no. for realism. Right. You're trying to enhance the design of the character, the features, the accessories, mm-hmm. exactly. the personality. Yeah. I'm going to see if I can just real quick do like a lighting pass. Uh, Mm -hmm. so first I would kind of darken everything, maybe not that much with the multiply layer. Mm -hmm. Let me find a good color. Um, and then I would go over it with a color dodge. Mm -hmm. So, uh, actually, yeah, that could work. Um, So let's say if I have some lighting from the left. Usually I would get a reference for for this. It would definitely go a little smoother. Um, But it's good just to kind of see. Yeah. But I did just want to show this real quick. Mm -hmm. Because I do think it's pretty interesting to work this way um and i always prefer to work this way versus doing the lighting at the same time as the color and design um i just really like to separate it out as much as possible and it is a good way to really get your values um and make them really strong and it's you're not worried like again you're not worrying about messing up any of the rendering that you did you're just you're almost revealing your painting yeah exactly (laughs) 
And with the the dodge, is that is that using the brush that you're using, or mm -hmm. is there is it right? It just yeah, puts that yeah, attribute just onto brush. the brush, correct? Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, no. So I'm doing it on a color dodge layer. Oh, uh, so okay, I'll, yeah, okay. all the lighting is on a separate layer. Gotcha, yeah, if gotcha. That wasn't gotcha. clear. Yeah. So you're creating a color dodge layer. Exactly. Yes. With and then using the brush. Gotcha. Yeah. And it's the same thing as when I was applying the shadow to the base. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just using the same brush to blend between like parts where I have the color dodge and parts where I don't, parts the gotcha. part that remains in shadow. So if you want to see just what this layer look looks like, that's it, right? Like it's just um, mm -hmm. light and shadow and then go into this dodge phase. It, it really, you can kind of really decide. Yeah, exactly. Well, cool. I think I've got about five more minutes left and um, yeah, this is day two with uh, Grace Jew and we're doing a fantasy character illustration of our autumn goddess. Um, I know beyond this, Grace is probably going to do some more work on this and finish it up and hopefully post it on your Behance profile, Instagram. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, this has been pretty awesome kind of seeing the process. I feel like you got pretty far. I mean, it wasn't a lot of time. So mm -hmm. feel proud. This is this is awesome. This is your first stream with us, right? So yes. you did a great job. Um, yeah, thanks for everybody uh, joining us in the chat. Yeah. Um, and especially if you came here for day one, day one was the, the we already had the figure, but it was really working on variations of, uh, of the dress and the costume and kind of deciding uh, what direction to go to, which you guys picked in the chat. So also, again, that's why it's so cool being in the chat on Behance. Um, and then day two, we came in and kind of looked at some different uh, color variations, which was awesome. Didn't go with green which is a Grace's <laughs> favorite color. Oh, That's no. okay. Well, we went with autumn colors, which makes a lot more sense for the autumn mm -hmm. goddess. Um, you can already see all this awesome light that's coming in. Okay, and see, now you get me all excited. I don't want this to end. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it looks like the chat was really excited to, to participate. Um, people were very uh, interested in watching and it seemed like a lot of people learned a lot. And uh, Nil says, great job. Um, yeah, thank you thank all you so for much coming for tuning on. in. I am yeah, this is... so glad to have been able to share this with everyone. Uh, maybe I will add a little gradient at the end. Not that, not that much of a gradient. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit too much. Um, no trip at the finish line. No. Oh, gosh. Maybe oh, yeah. Something so soft just, like that. Yeah, like a nice neutral yeah. muted. Yeah, just to kind of knock back that white. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, this is what we're going to be doing. We're here 930 in the morning, Pacific time, whatever time it is for you across the world. Love doing these uh, Adobe lives. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad I got to Robert Winterberg says, thanks, Grace and Chris. Uh, he says, great job, Grace. Uh, Richard so Lindley much. said, uh, amazing to see the whole process. And thank you. And Cartier Gates says, I love it when a painting comes together. I mean, yeah, you really mm -hmm. threw it together right at the end, which is <laughs> yeah. awesome. No, it's great. I mean, even though it's not like to the place you want it finished, it's good to mm -hmm. kind of see all of these elements coming together right at the end. Um, yeah. <laughs> a sunset or sunrise background would look cool. Thank you, Aaliyah. That is a suggestion. Could be possible. Yeah. If I was doing like a full character illustration, it definitely would. Um, it really just depends on like, where I want the focus to be. Mm -hmm. uh, for this, I'm actually trying to tone down the lighting a bit so you can see the design a little better, I think. Yeah. Well, I hope you get to find a lot more time to do some painting and yeah, do more really of these so uh, character designs. I know it's always so hard. Um, Oh, wait, hold on. This yeah, especially is when you part. have another. The very, very okay. end. Ooh. Yes, this is the oh, fun yeah. part. Those god rays are getting in there and splashing the back. Mm -hmm. That's nice. And real quick, what are you using for this? Just so people know. 
Uh, this is a soft brown brush with a very high, what's it called? High saturation color on a screen layer mode. Awesome. And that's so, the softness you want to do when you're doing this. You didn't catch mode. that. Yeah, this is going to be saved on the stream so you guys can check this out again. Yes. Um, check out all the tips. Well, I, yeah, I think that's it, guys. And mm -hmm. uh, stick around for the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge replays with uh, Julia Masalska, immediately followed by Logo Design with Alex Lazarus. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, two days of awesome uh, fantasy character illustration with Grace Jew. Um, yeah, and go check out her Behance. Go check out her Instagram. And it was so great having you, Grace. Um, Me too. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, everybody for being have a great here. week. Yeah, definitely. Bye, guys. See you soon.